say whatever I want. Um, hopefully most of you know Nathan. He has lived and worked at both Mary House and St. Joseph House. Um, and has also worked at the farm but never lived there. Um, and he has been a great student of all of the stuff around climate change, in particular the way the media has portrayed it and what is happening in the public imagination around understanding climate change. And so he offered to do a Friday night meeting to condense many of the things he's learned so we're not uh, as dumb as we once were. And uh, so without any further ado, Nathan Albright. Surrounding the uh, the toxic pools of water, 
because in the past when birds had come to land in the water, they would immediately die. So this doesn't really come through when we talk in broad terms about the Keystone XL pipeline, which carries tar sands oil, or even more generally when we talk about fossil fuel extraction, or even more generally about rising emissions. But things at the ground level absolutely matter. And I think, uh, but still, I think it's absolutely crucial that we try to convey the full scope of what's happening. Because the more I've researched on my own, the more I've realized how rare it is for anyone to lay it all out. So these are some of the sources um, that I've used for tonight. I brought some of the books here with me, and um, some of them are not, I don't have hard copies of, but I'm uh, absolutely eager to try to share information with anyone. The purpose of, of the talk, or the, my goal is to, um, to just be a resource for anybody on this issue, to be able to answer questions for people, to offer to bring this talk anywhere if anybody else would like it uh, for a different community, different situation, different group. Um, so please feel free, uh, I've tried to keep track of the uh, citations for anything that I say tonight, and if you're wondering what the source is, I'd be happy to try to provide that for you. So in this talk, I'm gonna try to bounce around a little bit in time. Um, I'm gonna give just a few snapshots and um, just so this isn't behind me, I'm gonna, uh, oh sorry. Sorry, let me keep going that, I'll get back to that in a second. Um, I'm gonna give a few snapshots from the very long timeline of global warming. Uh, I chose events not necessarily based on how significant they were, but more based on what they can help teach us uh, about the basic science, about who knew what, when, and what events were uncurrent, and again, in the hope of stringing together a coherent story. I'll also pause occasionally uh, to cover certain concepts so that we're all on the same page. Uh, we'll eventually look at some contemporary interpretations of the crisis, and I'll talk about how I've tried to make sense of everything. And I'll also, at the end, try to do uh, my best to address the question of hope and talk about what we can do here in this community and how. And then afterwards, we can uh, do some question and answers. So I, I want to start with uh, reading a slightly longer passage from uh, a, uh, David Wallace Wells' new book, The Uninhabitable Earth, uh, which describes a little bit of our current situation um, right now at 1.1 degrees of warming above industrial levels. <clears throat> so for context, he's writing this uh, sort of just to catch people up on what has happened since he wrote the original article that he then turned into this book. <clears throat> it is almost hard to believe just how much has happened and how quickly. In the late summer of 2017, three major hurricanes arose in the Atlantic at once. One of them was Hurricane Harvey, and when it struck Houston, it delivered such an epic rainfall, it was described in some areas as a 500,000 year event, meaning that we should expect that amount of rain to hit an area to hit that area once every 500 millennia. Sophisticated consumers of environmental news have already learned how meaningless climate change has rendered such terms, which were meant to describe storms that had a 1 in 500,000 chance of striking in any given year. But the figures do help in this way, to remind us just how far global warming has already taken us from any natural disaster benchmark that our grandparents would have recognized. To dwell on a more common 500-year figure for just a moment, it would, mean a, it would mean a storm that struck once during the entire history of the Roman Empire. 500 years ago, there were no English settlements across the Atlantic, so we're talking about a storm that should hit just once since Europeans arrived and established colonies in the Americas. One storm in all that time is what the meteorological record has taught us to expect, just one. Hurricane Harvey was the third such flood to hit Houston just since 2015. And the storm struck in places with an intensity that was supposed to be thousands of times rarer still. That same season, an Atlantic hurricane hit Ireland. 45 million were flooded from their homes in South Asia, and unprecedented wildfires tilled much of California into ash. And then there was the new category of once imaginable um, natural disasters Prices so large that they once would have been inscribed in folklore for centuries, today passing across our horizons ignored, overlooked, or forgotten. In 2016, a thousand-year flood drowned the small town Elliot, uh, Elli, uh, sorry, Ellicott City.
City, Maryland. To take but one example almost at random, it was followed two years later in the same small town by another. One week that summer of 2018, dozens of places all over the world were hit with record heat waves, from Denver to Burlington to Ottawa, from Glasgow to Shannon to Belfast, from Basili in Georgia to Yerevan in Armenia, whole swaths of southern Russia. The previous month, the daytime temperature of one city in Oman reached 121 degrees Fahrenheit and did not drop below 108 degrees all night. I'm sorry, I meant to uh, use this more appropriate background while I was reading this. <laughs> and in Quebec, 54 died from the heat. That same week, 100 major wildfires burned in the American West, including one in California that grew 4,000 acres in one day, and another in Colorado that produced a volcano-like 300-foot eruption of flames, swallowing an entire subdivision and inventing a new term, fire tsunami, along the way. On the other side of the planet, biblical rains flooded Japan, where 1.2 million were evacuated from their homes. Later that summer, Typhoon Mayut formed the evac forced the evacuation of 200 and sorry, 2.45 million from mainland China. The same week that Hurricane Florence struck the Carolinas, turning the port city of Wilmington briefly into an island and flooding large parts of the state with hot manure and coal ash. Along the way, the winds of Florence produced dozens of tornadoes across the region. The previous month in India, the state of Kerala was hit with its worst, worst floods in almost 100 years. That October, a hurricane in the Pacific wiped Hawaii's east islands nearly off the map. And in November, which has traditionally marked the beginning of the rainy season in California, the state was hit instead with the deadliest fire in its history, the Camp Fire, which scorched several hundred square miles outside of Chico killing dozens and leaving many more missing <clears throat> in a place called proverbially paradise. The devastation was so complete you could almost forget the Woolsey fire closer to Los Angeles, which burned at the same time and forced the sudden evacuation of 170,000 people. It is tempting to look at these string of disasters and think, climate change is here. And one response to seeing things long predicted actually come to pass is to feel that we have settled into a new era with everything transformed. The truth is actually much scarier. That is the end of normal, never normal again. We have not at all arrived at a new equilibrium. Global warming is not yes or no, nor is it today's weather forever or doomsday tomorrow. It is a function that gets worse over time as long as we continue to produce greenhouse gas. The effects will grow and build as the planet continues to warm from one degree to 1.5 to almost certainly two degrees and beyond. 